What's up everyone, Lord Ryujin here again, bringing you yet another narration. So, what are we going to talk about this week? Well, a number of topics have come up in different media outlets lately. So, there is quite a bit to talk about, but I wanted to take some time to get a little bit personal, as well as find out your opinions about this particular subject, Digital versus physical, new school versus old school. Because this is a debate, not only a debate, but a discussion that I've had to bring up multiple times with people. You know, I've said before, my brother-in-law, he's a PC gamer. He actually recently got rid of all of his consoles and just buys them all on PC. And while I understand that, I understand that method 100%, don't get me wrong, because through emulators and ROMs you can play just about any game in existence all on one machine and get access to it whenever you want. I understand it. I mean, it was part of the allure of, of the, uh, the Wii, for an example. The fact that you could get Nintendo and Super Nintendo and Nintendo 64 and you can play GameCube games through the disc slot and play Wii games through the disc slot as well as you can get Sega Genesis and you know just all kinds of other systems on it that was part of the allure of it so a part of me gets it but I don't know there's something impressive about having a library you know like just imagine for a minute you walk into somebody's house and you walk into this room that they have, this extra room, and you literally see walls upon wall upon wall of books. From the ceiling to the floor, covering all four walls. How impressed would you be? You would think that'd be rather impressive, wouldn't you? Certainly much more impressive than, I don't know, say somebody who just simply owned what are those Kindle Fires? And kept all their books on a digital front. I mean, yeah, sure, it's the same effect. You could read the same amount of books, and it's all on one device. But at the same time, there's something impressive about knowing that this person owns a copy of War and Peace, or owns a copy of this particular thing and didn't have to go and just simply emulate it. You know, I'll give some of my friends credit. You know, they go through a lot, you know, being able to map things to a 360 controller and then being able to play the game the way they want to play it, map the way that they want it. But like, for me, there's something about playing Ocarina of Time with the actual N64 controller. There's something about actually holding the, the NES controller in your hand when you're playing Mario 3. There's something about that feeling of holding the controller that you know the game was designed to work for rather than having to go and remap everything because here's the difference for me I pop Skyrim into my 360 I pick up my 360 controller and I go I put th Skyrim on a PC I have to update it and probably put all these drivers and stuff to it and make sure that my that my sound card and my video cards are all up to date and all this stuff and then I have to plug in a controller and remap everything to it to make it work pretty much the same way that it would work if I just simply popped it into the 360 and that's the reason why I prefer retro consoles and why I prefer physical media because sure having it as a, you know having it as a digital thing makes it easy it really does, but at the same time, it makes it so much easier to transfer. Like, look at all the trouble that we're going to that, that we've been going through lately with things like, you know, the Wii to the Wii U, or you know how 
only certain games are available on the Xbox Live Marketplace or on PlayStation Store. You know? Or, you know, if you want to be on PC, you have to find certain ROMs and make sure that they work right and, you know, all this other stuff. And you have to go through all this, uh, all, the, all basically all these back doors and hoops you have to jump through just to get some game that existed on the Dreamcast to work. When I already own a Dreamcast, it's easy to just buy it, pop it in the Dreamcast and get it to work. Like, look at how many hoops I would have to jump through, for example, just to be able to get a game like Black and White, or Doom 3, or just name any older game. And I mentioned Black and White because that was one of the very first PC games that I owned, and it would not work on my computer at all. And in order for me to update the sound card and the video card to get it to work properly, would have cost me way more than what I spent on the game. Years later, I believe they just released black and white as a port to the DS some years later. So problem solved. I get to play the I get to play the game without having to jump through hoops. I pop Doom 3 into my Xbox and it starts. There's no having to make sure that all the drivers are properly installed and everything's properly synced up. No. I just go. Now sometimes, yes, in the case of Dark Souls or something, I have to go through a very long patch and wait for it to update, but honestly, usually that's only one time. So make sure that you leave your thoughts on this, of course. What do you think? Are you more of a physical person like I am? Because again, it's more impressive, I think, when my friends come over and they see the physical library that I possess. You know? I mean, what good is it having an impressive library? Oh, I have over a thousand games on a computer. Versus, I have over a thousand games physically. Look at them. Look at them. I bet you probably didn't even know this game existed. Like, look, here's Super Glove Ball for the NES. Isn't that awesome? Not to mention the fact that you're also looking at things like, I don't know, um, games like Gyromite, for example, that work of Rob the Robot, that you would probably would have to go through so many hoops to get it to work of Rob the Robot, that screw it, dude, pop it into my NES. Pop Rob the Robot in and it's done. It's good to go. You see what I'm saying? That to me is more impressive than somebody who just simply went on and found an emulator and a ROM and put it on there. Now I know that with certain games like the first two Elder Scroll games for example they're only available on PC so I'm kinda stuck in that window you know I'm kind of have to be forced to it, but if I had to pick between a PC and a console, I'm going to pick a console, because to me PCs are meant for what I'm doing right now, talking, doing videos, doing editing, checking Facebook, checking emails, that's what a computer is meant to be for, a computer is not a gaming system. Because if it was, it would say personal gaming system, not personal computer. I mean, even the NES said Nintendo Entertainment System. It didn't say the Nintendo Computer System. And I know that right now that there's not much of a difference between, you know, PCs and computers. The line is starting to become very blurred, and I understand that. But just from my perspective, people, physical is the best way. It's more impressive. People come over and they see how much time and money you have invested into this. Like, you, you own all these games. Yes, and I've beaten and gotten 100% in every single one. And I spent the time to hunt down these games, even this rare-to-find one. I hunted it down 
physically at a thrift mall, got it for a steal. You know, like that kind of stuff to me is better than just I sat there and I spent five minutes downloading it. And also, I just prefer retro. There's something about it. There's something about the feel of holding the controller in your hand. You know, I've said stuff like this before. I've seen people that, that, that they'll do something and they'll do like a DS game and they'll modify it to work on their PC. And I think, but that's not the point. The point is to use the touchscreen of the DS. The point is to use, you know, the number pad of the, of the Atari Jaguar. The point is to use the Z trigger of the Nintendo 64. That is the point. That's the reason why these games were designed to work in the manner that they do. And to me, that is the purest form of gaming. And while I, again, understand why people would want to emulate and have that stuff on their computer for the convenience of having it all in one spot, at the same time, I have to kind of think, well, maybe it's just the way that I grew up because I'm more old school. You know, I'm not part of this newfangled modern age. I grew up in the 80s when computers were not a thing, but game consoles were. So, to me, it just seems like gaming consoles, they need to stay physical. And holding the controller is way better than using a computer. Playing the game the way it was meant to be played on the, on the console is way better than using an emulator to run it. So make sure that you leave your comments on, on the matter, of course. And as always, guys, I'm sorry for the long rant. I don't really have much else that I feel like talking about. Everything else is kind of useless, or futile, or things that I've already gone over and stated, or in the case of one particular thing that I was going to talk about, actually kind of just stupid and redundant and not even really even needed to be discussed. So that's my rant for this week, guys. Uh, hopefully I'll have one for you next week is two, unless I have any uh, future problems with equipment, but so far I'm not. Make sure that you leave your comments on the matter or even suggest future videos. Um, otherwise, have a great weekend, and I will see you guys next time.